just perfectly right now. I don't know what's happening. I'm just flowing. I just don't think. That's like Bruce Lee, dude. I just don't You're think. You're flowing, bro. Once I start thinking, then it's scary because um, that's a dangerous neighborhood to travel by itself. And I'm a scary dude in that neighborhood, so I don't hang out up there long. I watched you in that Holyfield documentary, and it was a really good documentary. And you were you were extremely gracious about fighting Holyfield and what he was as an opponent for you. Do you feel like he was an underrated fighter? Oh, absolutely. But, you know, and... um. Listen, um, most fighters fight and saying they become this, and this is what they become. Yeah. I became, I, I plan on becoming who I am now when I was 12 years old. I was going to be this arrogant, not take no shit from nobody type of fighter in the ring and in the street. Just that kind of guy, John L. Sullivan, like, and really, um, that's who I wanted to be. I wanted to be the guy I'm right, well, not right here now, but the guy I was then when I was a little boy. I watched something. You said you got beat up when you was little and, and you didn't like that feeling. Yeah. No, I, beating up wasn't bad, but it's the humiliation. It's the, t take me through that. What, were you scared or what? Yeah, I was scared, yeah. And you didn't want to feel that anymore? No. So you trained? No, it wasn't from fighting. I, I just, um, I got in the fights and friends of mine taught me like if, when guys bother you, do this, and if they're too big, you stab them, you shoot them, you do right. whatever, but they have to respect you. Yeah. You can't live in this world and a man don't respect you. You take your mother, your wife, your daughter, your kids, and you can't do nothing. He'll violate them in front of you. How hard was that for you to, to shake? Once you get, once you get out of uh, Brownsville, the rules are the same, but you have to be a bit more subtle with them. No, um... Once I met Customato, um, yeah, I developed I developed a method of thinking where I was just truly like really emotionalist. I didn't care about you know almost like a psych psychopath. So where their feelings didn't matter, my feelings didn't matter. Really? Yeah, really. And so you became a sociopath after Customato? No, during him. During. He taught me that. Yeah. He taught you that their feelings didn't matter. Nobody's feelings matter. And is that in the ring? Nobody. In the your ring. Mother, your mother, your father, everybody, anybody in there. That's food. What would he have thought when you fucking went with the Holyfield shit then? I don't know. Maybe that wouldn't have happened if he wasn't around. You think so? Absolutely. Do you still have to? Do you still have to control your temper? Is that still something for you? Every now and then, very yeah. rare. Uh, uh, every couple of years, very rare. I've never been able to do it for that long. Very rare. But it, but it's getting longer and longer, right? Yeah. Before you kind of have your little yeah. fuck ups, your hiccups. Yeah, you know, because I'm one of those guys. I'm I'm a megalomania with a very low self esteem sometimes. Yeah. So um, those two conflict with one another. So I, I mean, you know, I'm, sometimes I'm torturing myself. What do you do to raise your self esteem? Excuse me. What do you do to get? What do you do to raise your self esteem? It's just been hanging out with my kids. My whole life is now is hanging out with my kids. I haven't looked my oldest daughter's with me now. Yes, okay. that's all I do. I hang out with my kids. And that and that's what, because I I got friends that like, I see so much in them, but they don't love themselves that much. And it's like I don't. How do you get? How do you help them? Or is there really is no help? No, they don't look at they don't look at themselves with the same eyes you do. No, it's I true. I don't look at myself with it. They know their flaws that you don't know about them. Yeah. That they're dealing with and they haven't come to, um, you know, a lot of times we have to come to peace with ourselves. We have to forgive ourselves. Do you feel like you got a lot of forgiving to do? Or have you done it? Hell yeah, I have a lot of forgiving. I've yeah. done a lot of forgiving. But I have something in me that just want me dead. To this day? To this day. It tells me right now, look at you. You think you don't got me fooled. You got these white people fooled. You don't got yeah. me fooled, Mike. I know what you are. Well, I'm you're fooled. Not, you're not shit. Damn. You that's really the, think so? That's the word. That's, that's, that's my demon. Where do you demon. think that came from? Hey, I've seen bad things. you seen bad things growing up? Yeah. How early? Well, you know. Four? As soon as you're able to really. As soon as you, know, as, soon as you can right, remember, yeah. that's when you started seeing it. W yeah, was it in the home? The toughest guy in the neighborhood rules the block. Yeah. You know, just like those mafia movies. Huh. Was it inside the house or outside the house that you saw that shit? Both. So you didn't have any safe. We didn't have anywhere safe to go for how long? I don't know. I don't know what was safe. Maybe the the, the um the detention center was safe. 
huh. in there quite a few times. Would you look? Would do you think that you might even had 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 post traumatic stress disorder, like something that somebody like it, sound, it sounds to me like you're describing a fucking war zone? Yeah, but you know, um, I'm not one of those guys. I'm different than the rest of the people from my family. I have the life skills they didn't have. Yeah. I don't have the education and all that stuff, but I have the life skills. That was my education. Yeah. You know, um, conducting life skills for certain situations that could be really costly if I made mistakes. And but these mistakes that you've made, you've learned from them, so therefore they're lessons. That's why we're talking now. Indeed. Mike Tyson has a has a number one movie out, It Man 3. Yeah, we kick butt, you know. See, no one else I know is about stuff hereditary. This is something I hate about myself. I'm a braggart. My mother was a braggart. Her family a brag. You know, I'm a braggart. I hate the but it just comes out. I don't know why I even say it. Yeah, I'm a braggart. You really think you're a braggart? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, a braggart. I'm so I'm so proud of myself because I come from such low, you know what I mean, means and I'm I'm successful in something. So I'm, so I'm a braggart, so that part about me is brag. I, you know, I've been as low as I can be, so no one can tell me anything about that. And you, and you keep craw- you keep fucking cl- clawing your way back up to the top, man. I'm a monster. I'm an animal. You have to kill me to beat me. I don't think anyone's gonna beat you, dog. I don't think anyone's and gonna. I'm talking beat about you. that's the long haul in life. You have to kill me. Yeah. Well, I fight to the end. Mike Tyson, it was a pleasure chatting with you. Awesome.